Okay, today I want to tell you a little bit about our favorite protein. It's called the major sperm protein. We abbreviate this as MSP. MSP folds into an immunoglobulin-like structure as seen here on the left. It is the most abundant uh, protein in nematode sperm and it is specifically expressed in sperm. If you, want, if you will take a look here at the bottom left, we see that MSP forms a filament network in sperm and this filament network aids in sperm locomotion. If we take a look here at the right, we see that MSP can be secreted into the extracellular environment where it acts as a signaling molecule and promotes oocyte maturation. So MSP has two primary functions. It acts as a cytoskeletal element and it acts as a secreted signaling molecule. Although MSPs are only found in nematode sperm, the MSP domain can be found in many animal species. Uh, these, animal, these MSP domains are found in a larger family of protein called VAPs. These VAPs have three domains, the MSP domain, the coil-coil domain, oh, and a transmembrane domain. This transmembrane domain is uh, located in the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum where the MSP domain faces the cytosol. These VAPs have homologs in different species. In C. elegans, the homolog is called VPR1. And in humans, the homolog is called uh, VAPB or ALS8. ALS stands for amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, and it is a late onset neurodegeneration disease. Uh, this, uh, specifically, this P56S mutation in the MSP domain is thought to, is thought to cause ALS. We have been studying in our lab uh, VPR1 null mutant worms to better understand the role uh, that these VAP uh, proteins play. Uh, Hugo Bellin's lab, our lab, and other labs have shown that MSP can be cleaved from its transmembrane domain and secreted into the extracellular environment. We also believe that the MSP signaling function is conserved through VAP proteins. We, believe, we know that MSP binds to EPH receptors and LAR-like receptors. MSP is found in the blood serum and the cerebral spinal fluid of humans. The P56S uh, ALS causing uh, mutation is thought to prevent MSP from being cleaved and secreted, which implies that MSP plays a major role in ALS pathogenesis. Today I'm going to go over the two primary phenotypes that we see in our uh, VPR1 null mutant worms. The first will be a muscle mitochondrial defect in the body wall muscle, and the second will be a gonad development defect that we see. I'll present data that shows that these defects are due to failed MSP secretion. I'll also present data that suggests that the germ, the germline and the nervous system are the primary sites where VPR1 is needed. I'll present data that suggests that the muscle and the gonad pathways are separable. And I'll also present a little bit of data showing that, uh, that MSP signaling function is conserved in mice. First, I'm going to go over the, uh, the muscle mitochondria defect, but I'm going to give you a brief overview of what uh, wild-type mitochondria localization looks like. In wild-type mitochondria, we see uh, that the mitochondria form these elongated tubules, and they associate with the actin-rich eye bands. If we look here in figure B, we are able to visualize the mitochondria using a mitoGFP marker, and we are able to do this in live worms. And what we see is that the mitochondria form these parallel arrays along the dense bodies. If we look here and blown up in figure C, we see that the mitochondria form these shown in green, these elongated tubules, and that, uh, that they associate it with the actin-rich eye bands here shown in red. What we see is that, uh, that, the, that the mitochondria form these associations with the eye bands throughout larval development. So as we progress through the larval development, we see the mitochondria become more and more associated with, with, the, uh, with the eye bands. And if we look here at the top uh, panel, we see in the L, at the L1 stage that the mitochondria are largely perinuclear and they have branches that extend into the muscle cytoplasm. And if we look here on the right-hand panel in our VPR1 null mutants, we see that it looks pretty similar to our, uh, to our uh, control. But what we don't see is we don't see the mitochondria throughout the larval development forming these associations with the eye bands. And what we do see is we do see fission and fusion defects, and we also see metabolism defects where we see uh, lipid accumulation in the, in the muscle uh, 
in the muscle belly. And that's indicated by these little white arrows here. Next, I want to go over our second primary phenotype that we see in our VPR1 null mutant worms. Here on the right-hand side is an illustration of uh, gonad development in wild-type hermaphrodite C. elegans. And what we see here at the L4 stage, we see that the germ cells enter meiosis and begin uh, gametogenesis. And here in the adults, we, what we see is we see sperm and we see oocytes. And if you will, take a look here on this right-hand figure where we use DAPI staining to, uh, to visualize the DNA. We see that uh, there's thousands of uh, germ cells that are differentiating from the mitotic zone to the transition zone pachytene stage, and we see oocytes and we see sperm. We also see the stereotypical shape of the gonad, which is a C-shape, and we see what we see in our VPR1 null mutants is we see a very stunted small gonad. So if you take a note at the size of this one and this one, you can see a pretty clear difference. Uh, what we also see contained within this gonad is, uh, is germ cells that are largely undifferentiated. This data suggests that VPR1 plays a critical role in gonad uh, development. Next, we want to know where is VPR1 needed, so we turn to two primary strategies. The first strategy we used was uh, genetic mosaic analysis, and the second is we used uh, transgenic overexpression. And what we found is if we, uh, if we lose VPR1 in the AB lineage, which gives rise to, uh, to the nervous system, we, uh, we see a severe gonad defect here in this panel. And if we lose VPR1 in the P4 lineage, we get a severe gonad defect, which we can see here in this panel. And these results are mirrored when we, uh, when we do the same thing with uh, our, muscles, our muscle assay. We can also rescue these phenotypes by overexpressing uh, VPR1 in small subsets of neurons, the germline, or intestinal cells. So here are some examples of that. In this first panel, what we have, again, is our wild-type mitochondria forming these elongated globules and, and associating with the I bands. Here in the second panel, we have our VPR1 null mutant, and we have a very disrupted uh, mitochondrial phenotype. If we look here in the third panel, what we have is rescue of this phenotype, and this rescue is uh, due to expressing VPR1 in the GABA motor neurons. We also saw rescue when we expressed VPR1 in the head interneurons, and we saw rescue when we uh, expressed VPR VPR1 in the zygotic germline. And this data suggests that since we're expressing VPR1 in these tissues and it's, uh, and it's fixing the muscle, basically, that somehow the MSP domain is secreted into the extracellular environment and then it is acting upon the muscle. Since we know VPR1's, or MSP's receptor, what we, didn't, what we then did is we took we know it's the clear one lar-like receptor, and what we did, then did is we used CRISPR-Cas9 to uh, knock in a TD tomato into the three prime locus of the clear one gene, and then we looked for the endogenous expression of clear one. We found that the, that the endogenous expression is, uh, occurred all throughout the, the muscle membrane. So this muscle membrane has direct access to the pseudocelum, which is consistent with the idea of MSP being secreted and then its target receptor being on the muscle surface and, and, and it begins the process of remodeling the uh, muscle mitochondria. Next, we wanted to know when was VPR1 needed. And this was a little tricky, but we, uh, we, did, we used two strategies. We used binary Q and we used this strategy to temporally express VPR1 in the head and the neurons. And we also used the temperature sensitive clear one allele to uh, turn, on, turn, off, turn on and off the, uh, the clear one receptor. And what we found is that for normal gonad development to occur, uh, VPR1 expression was needed specifically at the early L1 stage. And we also found that for normal muscle mitochondria morphology to occur, we needed VPR1 by the early adult stage. Lastly, I would like to show you a little bit of our mouse data. Uh, if we take a look here at the left-hand uh, figure, 
uh, we see that uh, mice muscle have this stereotypical pattern where they have these doublets, these mitochondria, and they align along the Z-disc and the I-bands. If you take a look here on the right-hand side, we, this is an image of TA muscle of 16-week-old of mice, and we see that they form this stereotypical doublet pattern, and we see, which is indicated by these little black circles. We can see the mitochondria. And we were able to um, obtain two independently derived uh, VATB knockout lines, and the first one we have an exon 1 deletion, and the second one we have an exon 3 deletion. And what we see in these uh, knockout mice is we see that the mitochondria is largely mislocalized, they're abnormal in shape, and there looks to be like lots of degeneration in these mitochondria. So this data kind of suggests that the signaling function of MSP is conserved in, in mice and higher organisms. Lastly, I just want to state that our work is, our work, uh, our results are consistent with the idea that VAP's signaling function are required early on in development. What this means is uh, that ALS is a late onset disease, and so what we, what we believe is that, that since it's, that the disease may initiate well in advance of the clinical uh, symptoms presenting themselves. So this is, uh, this, this idea opens up uh, kind of a new avenue for possible treatment, uh, treatment methods, and, and I'd like to wrap it up there. Um, I'd like to thank, give a big thanks to uh, Dr. Michael Miller and all the people who are involved in these projects, and then I'd like to open up for any questions. You VP alpha mutant have the mitochondrial fusion uh, phenotype. Can overexpression of DRP1 rescue your VP alpha mutant phenotype? Excuse me, I didn't un understand that question. Um, UVP R1 shows the mitochondrial fusion phenotype, right? Yes. And DRP1 is a fission protein. If overexpression of DRP1 in your VP R1 mutant, can the mitochondria go to the Wild type? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't understand. What's, what's the mitochondrial phenotype in an overexpression of VPR1? Oh, in an overexpression of. DRP1, a fusion protein, can rescue your VPR1 mitochondrial fusion phenotype? Are you talking about this, uh, this yeah, slide? Yeah, this one, right. Okay. And you're asking what is the phenotype when we overexpress VPR1? DRP1. A different gene. Different oh, gene. Do you know? Oh, we, they didn't. we, we didn't do, ex, ex, overexpress that gene. Uh, okay. Yeah, so because we, 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 wouldn't know. we work with VPR1, so we didn't, uh, we didn't just overexpress uh, random genes. Any more questions? One more. Um, how, how did you decide which neurons to rescue? And I'm just curious. Oh, we we we, we did uh, several neurons actually. So uh, we we knew that it was important in the uh, in the nervous system based on the genetic mosaic. So here we saw that we had a phenotype when we lost it in the in the nervous system. So we 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 used the GABA motor neurons. We used the head neurons. We used several other promoters. We just didn't want to show like 15 panels of. of different promoters that we use to overexpress, huh? No, it, it, w what we found is that in small subsets, we still got rescue, which shows that if it's in the neurons, then that's sufficient to rescue it to some point. We did see varying amounts of rescue in these, so some of this we saw like closer to the null phenotype than the wild type phenotype, but that's, that's to be expected when you're expressing it at different levels, yes. Last question. Yeah, have you looked at the mitochondria in motor neurons, sort of following the motor neuron? Uh, yeah, have we does looked it, at the... Yeah, do you, does, does VPR also affect mitochondria in motor neurons as well as muscles? Just sort of following the ALS idea. Yes, it, it, it does affect the, the motor neurons. Um, and... Okay. I guess the... 
the, the best way to, uh, I mean, ALS is, it, it definitely affects the fast twitch uh, muscles and, and those, those, those are the muscles that, that have the neurons that degenerate uh, when you do have ALS and, and uh, VPR1 signaling to, to that is definitely affected. I'm not sure exactly what you're asking, so I don't know how to answer. Well, I just wondered whether the C. elegans motor neurons degenerated or if there might have Oh, if we looked at the degeneration yeah. of yeah. the actual yeah. neurons. Yeah. Uh, I think maybe we did, but I don't. I don't. I don't know that data. If we, if somebody's done that or not, to be honest, but I don't think I definitely didn't do that. So, so yeah, I don't know if it if the neurons degenerate or not, to be honest. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks.